When I was younger, my dad told me he believes the purpose of parenting was to make me and my sisters a little bit better version of him. And I think about the time when I was born. There was a lot of fear and doubt and frustration. I was born without my arms and legs. And I don't have any kids of my own, uh, but I do have some pretty amazing parents that had an attitude that they weren't going to allow that to go in control and dictate and affect my life in any major negative way. Um, doctors told them a lot of things. I might be dependent on, on their help living at home the rest of my life, maybe dependent on uh, prosthetics or other devices, that it would be very expensive. They really didn't have an education. Uh, they didn't have a whole lot of money. There was, uh, I'm sure, a lot of hard times early on. But they made that decision early on that they weren't going to uh, just to allow me to live a different life, that they're gonna go and treat me as, as normal. I have a baby niece now. She's eight months old and uh, her name's Kinley. I see Kinley reaching out to go and try to grab uh, the spoon when she's being fed. When I'm watching her do that, I, I thought about the first couple times that I would go and reach out to try to go and grab the spoon and, and how hard that must have been for them to see me fail a whole lot. Learning how to pick up a spoon, holding it just between the ends of my elbows, like the way that I hold a spoon now. I'm sure it must have been hard. It was their natural instinct to want to come in and, and try to help me out at first, but I had to go through those failures to learn how to do it. And some things came natural, some things didn't. Um, but now in, in my life, I really don't have that many adaptations for things because of what they taught me early on. Learn how to eat with normal spoon and fork, just holding um, the silverware between the ends of my arms and swinging it around to go and scoop the food up. Learned how to um, shave, kind of the same way, holding the shaver um, with the ends of my arms, writing with a normal pen, pencil, holding it between the ends of my arms. Uh, type about 50 words a minute on a normal keyboard. Um, now I live in a three-story townhouse on my own. My bedroom's on the top floor. I've got a stool to go and get up to the bathroom sink. Uh, and my vehicle that I drive, I've got a Dodge Durango. It has lifted up pedals, extensions on the pedals. I use my left foot for the brake, my right foot for the gas. It's a normal steering wheel. Put the seat up a little bit closer to the wheel. And it's become my favorite hobby to thoroughly freak people out in the Starbucks drive-thru. Pass my credit card real quick to go and uh, pay for the coffee and see people like kind of freak out. Whoa! Throw coffee all over the place. But to me, they, they did, they encouraged me to not focus on the disability. And I think a lot of times we get caught up in looking at the wrong things. And as, as adults, for, for me with my niece, for maybe for you and your kids or your grandkids, I mean, they, they will watch you to see what you're focusing on. And I think if, uh, if they'd helped me with everything, I wouldn't have been able to, to learn how to do things on my own. I had to go through and, and learn how to fail a lot at first. The very first time I got myself dressed, I was 16 years old. It was my summer going into, um, summer break going into my junior year of high school. And I was sitting at home in my sweatpants and my best friend Joey calls me up and he says that him and his mom wanted to come and pick me up and take me out to a movie in like an hour. Sitting at home, home alone, and my mom was five minutes away at a local park watching my sisters play in a softball tournament. And I told her, I said, there is absolutely no way I'm asking my best friend or my best friend's mom to get me dressed. She said, let me call you back in a couple minutes. Five minutes later, she called back and she said, I'm sorry, I can't leave. You're gonna have to find a way to do this on your own. So I had to go through a grief cycle pretty quick. You know, I had 32 seconds to be sad and maybe another 29 seconds to be really ticked off at her and had to figure out how to do this. Now the clock's ticking, so I've got an hour window to go in to make this happen. So I went and started with my left sock and battled with the sock, trying to get this on my foot. And finally found um, some kind of tool. I knew that there would be some kind of tool to use to, to get the, the sock on. My dad was an engineer and always helped me think outside of the box. So I went and found some paper clips and undid the paper clips in my mouth to shape a hook. So I stuffed the paper clip inside the sock and I just fought with this thing for like 30 minutes to get that first sock on. The next sock I was able to figure out in about 15 minutes and used my same paper clip system for that and went and leaned back and stuck the, uh, the paper clip inside the zipper of my pants and used that to go and zip my pants up for the first time. That whole process all together took like an hour. Now when I get dressed on my own, it takes maybe a minute 
if I'm just throwing on my, my socks and throwing on my pants, zipping up my pants, I, I don't use the same um, adaptation. I figured out how to do it just with the ends of my arms and it maybe takes a minute. But where we start anything, it's, it's really, really hard at first. But I think in order for our next generation to be a better version of ourselves, then we do have to learn how to fail. And sometimes failure is not fun, but I believe it is the only way to go outside of our comfort zone and to learn, is to be knocked down and, and to learn how to go and, and to stand back up. My name is Kyle Maynard, and I am Positively Positive.